The greatest challenge is getting carbon out of the atmosphere and into a product we can use. And in the end, it's a, it's a biological solution we look for, not an engineering solution. These gullies that we see here are the main source of sediment to stream to rivers and to the coast in southeastern Australia. Uh, and it's the first national land care project with NSF in Australia, and we hope there'll be some more in the future. I'm Tony Coote, uh, Malone Creek Natural Farms. We have a, uh, we're two, two farms uh, occupying parts of this Maloon Creek Valley, um, uh, east of Canberra, near Bungendore. Um, we've farmed here for, since 1968. Uh, for many years I, I've uh, been concerned about the, uh, the health of the land and uh, and the fact that so much of it was destroyed for all, all sorts of good intentions many, many years ago. And as beautiful as this place is, uh, there we have a deeply in, in, incised uh, creek that runs through the farm for several kilometres. Ever since ABC ran the Australian story, it generated an unprecedented amount of interest in rural communities and, and landowners. Um, the, the, the Southern Rivers Catchment Management Authority had a lot of inquiries from farmers and rural people in our catchment areas about natural sequence farming and how can it be applied in, in our area. When I met Peter Andrews, and saw the, the work that uh, he had done on Barrimal and then went to Tarwin Park. Uh, and I could see that, uh, that it was just so clear, and as it is to most farmers who've, who work with Peter, it is it's so clear that this is the way we, if we ever are going to rehabilitate our, our river systems, this is the, the only method we have available to be able to do it properly. So it was really through meeting Peter and I could see the, the genius that this man has in doing this uh, that uh, we've went ahead with this. I've been kind of put in you know, a couple of big rocks just up in, on this ledge here, the back of this there and then build this wall across like that and fill it all back with just sediment right out of the bed so that you've got, you end up having this filled. This is the wall that's going to carry the, carry the um, pressure.
what we looked at here was this little delta. It was a recently eroded gully, so it was just rock spreading down. We just put a, a row of rocks across to create a step. And this is really mostly designed for flood events to keep the energy of the water at a particular, in a particular range. But immediately you do something like this, you set off this step. And so what was gravel, like in the upstream, becomes sediment and grass below. It's as quick as the next flood. I mean, you can do it. And if you're, as I said earlier, if it was a good gardener, you could, and you knew how to distribute the different types of plants because as this extends, you'll get wetland plants growing this side and grass plants growing on the downside. And as soon as you know how to replace that, it's as quick as you just laying them in place. And the planting, by the way, is so critical to, to the whole issue because the, the physical structures are only there to, to, to get the system started and to hold, to hold things until the plant, till the vegetation gets established, then it does the job. And in the end, it's a, it's a biological solution we look for, not an engineering solution. It's another paradigm shift. See? local uh, Southern Rivers Catchment Management Authority here in New South Wales. Uh, there are some very wise people in the management and on the board of that CMA who could also see that this needed to be demonstrated somewhere because people can only see from a demonstration not by just seeing the theory. So uh, we put together uh, the first in Australia cooperative arrangement as a model that can be taken forward that others can use. And so the, this model is with the, the CMA representing the state government regula regulators, funded by the federal government, um, working with the Land Care Council of this area, and we had all of the land care uh, groups meet together and everybody put their hand up to, unanimously to say, let's go ahead with this demonstration. So that's the land care is representing the farmers and the community. Uh, and then the individual landholder, which in this case was, was me. I think Tony's commitment to this project epitomises rural New South Wales and rural landowners right across our landscape that are seeing this program as being something they want to be involved with. In all my years as a natural resource manager, which are now up to about 35 years, I haven't seen farmer involvement in natural resource management to the degree that they are with NSF. So Tony epitomises that passion and his commitment to this project is, is quite significant as a partner. And so we've got now, uh, we've got a model of cooperation between the, the landholder, uh, who is the steward of the land after all, and that's where the, what the farmers are, the stewards of the land. They're the ones who are really have the effect. Uh, the, um, the land care, uh, network throughout the region which represents all the neighbours and the community, the uh, catchment management authority representing the regulatory body uh, and the federal government through the funding. Now what what better uh, cooperation can you have in that? And then there's the scientific community of course 
that comes in to do, to do the research, to do the measuring uh, and to take it on further. There are two things that science has never really done properly, is analyse landscape hydrology so that everybody could understand it simply. And that means we could never understand biodiversity because it's the linkage of plants and the relationships between them that is biodiversity in the plant world. You know, It suggests if biodiversity is important that each plant is helping it, the other one in some way. And the only way they can be linked is by the movement of water and a certain amount in atmosphere, but mostly it's water. And we just haven't planned it. We haven't understood it and we don't set up a landscape relative to those components. Since we've put in the NSF works in this stream, which stretches some five kilometres, the stream flow has main, been maintained over um, you know, 12 and 18 months at a time. And at the moment, right in the middle of winter with hardly any rain over the last few months, there's still a base flow of, of two megalitres per day um, flowing out the bottom of this system. Two megalitres equates to two full Olympic sized swimming pools of water flowing uh, through the river every day. So in doing this work it's actually re-established this stream to be a perennial stream not an ephemeral stream where permanent water flows through this stream um, whereas before the works it didn't. So that's been um, quite a, a major achievement of the project and and it's, it's one of the principles of NSF um, in, in implementing um, re stream rehabilitation in, in landscapes like this. Think of the amount of more water that used to be here that isn't here now because we have a drainage system that drains it out to sea. And it is so simple to fix. I mean here in a few kilometres of creek we put in a few leaky weirs and a few structures and have changed the whole system. It took two weeks of work, it changed in, in, at the first rainfall and a small rainfall, it's now a chain of ponds, there's moisture underneath all the floodplain not, not far below so that the plants can access it. Uh, and it and the cost of it was less than the cost of buying a new tractor and the water's being purified. Now how simple is that? That's all we have to do and it is so quick. <laughs>